friends, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be on why I like being a cybersecurity analyst. If you're new to my channel, I'm currently working as a security analyst and have been for a bit more than three years now. And for anyone who is looking to potentially get into being a security analyst, maybe this video can help convince you, as well as for those of you who are on the fence about it. So the first thing I wanted to discuss is work flexibility. Personally, I'm someone who really values my flexibility, and specifically, I'm talking about being able to work remotely, as well as being able to also shift your schedule around if, for example, there is something that comes up during the day, like a doctor's appointment, or maybe you have some kind of event, and being able to then make up the work that you missed later on in the evening when you're able to pick it up and this is coming from someone who doesn't have any children or other big family obligations like that but I'd imagine if you were someone with kids potentially or maybe with a partner or family that relies on you for support then this aspect of the job is probably even more important to you because you're able to then be there for your family rather than being glued to your desk from 9 to 5 or 8 to 5 or whenever you work in terms of location flexibility a security analyst role in my opinion is is a role that can be done from anywhere as long as of course there aren't any government boundaries or sanctions that don't allow you to work in certain countries but for the most part as a security analyst for my specific role I currently work full-time remotely and this is also one of the big reasons why I switched into my current job because I wanted to have that freedom of being able to not have to go into an office to get my work done especially when I am just as productive and able to hit my goals while I'm working from home and there are many jobs in cybersecurity that provide you that work flexibility as well as being able to work remotely which is a huge plus for anyone who is looking for that kind of work setup and the next thing is having impact with the work that I do so I do think cybersecurity is one of those sectors where you're able to know the direct impact that you're making maybe not necessarily in a way where you are protecting someone's information and you're setting them an alert telling them that you protected them from xyz exploit or xyz hacker but it is really just a personal feel-good feeling of knowing that you're doing good and positive things for the data of the people that you're protecting for your clients for your customers especially if it's around sensitive information like financial information or health information well, there's definitely not many jobs out there where you're able to feel the direct impact or understand the direct impact that you're making on society in a positive way compared to cybersecurity roles this could be something as small as taking on a ticket where someone may have had their password compromised and helping them get their account back as well as providing tips on how to secure their account in the future for example through multi-factor authentication or using stronger passwords or using a password manager and if you're looking for a good password manager i do have a link to try one password for free linked in the description below all the way to things like detecting and preventing DDoS attacks, dealing with emergencies and fire drills at work. It really does make your job a lot funner when you're able to know the impact that you're making on others around you and you're able to correlate your direct work to the effects and impacts that it makes. And the next thing is good career growth and career trajectories. So obviously these are some of the most important things including salary of course that people are looking into when they are deciding what jobs and roles that they want to go into. Cybersecurity is definitely one of the sectors in tech and in general that have really good career trajectories as well as good salaries. Even in an entry level role you could be starting out fresh out of a boot camp or a college degree and already making more than the median US household income which definitely is not the case for many college majors out there. So along with starting with a good entry level salary to a good track for career growth I do think it is one of the best long-term careers out there in tech and beyond. And of course this ties back to job security where there is a huge need for cybersecurity talent and the specific skills are needed for cybersecurity roles that honestly employers just aren't able to find the right talent to fill in these jobs because there aren't enough of us out there. This also means that it typically makes it a lot easier for cybersecurity professionals to be able to find the jobs that they want to go into when they are either looking to go into a different niche in cybersecurity or just looking to expand their skills and go into a different company. If you have the cybersecurity skills that companies are looking for, it's going to be very easy for you to be able to navigate the market even during times of recession and economic downturn. And by the way, I have made videos on this topic specifically and I can link that in the description below if you guys want to check that out. And the next reason is the fact that cybersecurity professionals get to work on very interesting problems that give you a lot of insight into what the technology space is looking like as a whole. So obviously I'm not going to sit here and tell you 
that every single day I am having a blast and trying brand new things all the time during my day job. But I do think that cybersecurity typically does have a lot more going on than other roles may have. For example, in software engineering, even if there is a new framework being used or some really hot or popular third party library that a lot of people are seeing good things about, even if you're a developer, you may not be using that specific coding language or it just may not apply to the things that you're working on. So generally, even if something brand new is coming out, you may not necessarily be touching it compared to someone working in cybersecurity where if there is a new exploit or vulnerability or tool, it's going to be kind of like your job to do your due diligence and learn what it's about. I'm not saying to read through the entire documentation and download it and buy a license for it and all of those things, but I am saying that it is generally going to be helpful for your career if you're able to know what that tool is and know what it does. Because you never know when your company may find a new vendor for a vulnerability scanner or maybe a SIEM tool. And there's always going to be newer and greater tools in cybersecurity that are being used. And just being able to keep up with those trends as well as new exploits out there is going to be very helpful to your career. And it also just makes your job in general a lot more interesting because you're going to be working on different problems. You're going to be learning different things, which also leads to different experiences during your day-to-day -day job compared to a software engineer who may be working on new tickets, but generally going to be around the same technologies for years on end, which is not the case for someone who is working in cybersecurity when things are always changing and evolving, especially for smaller to medium-sized companies. Now, of course, if you're working at a larger company and maybe and maybe the technology cycle isn't as fast as a smaller company or a startup, it still is going to be part of your job to go out there and learn about the new tools. Maybe go out there and go to different conferences for cybersecurity hacks and cybersecurity tools. I think out of the big four sectors of technology, these are the big sectors that I personally refer to um, for cybersecurity, software engineering, cloud, and then data science slash ML, AI, those things. Cybersecurity, maybe just behind the data science and ML space, is going to be one of the ones that change the most and always have things updating and new ideas coming in. And the next thing is a low barrier to entry. So many cybersecurity professionals that I know either do not have a cybersecurity degree, which is me, maybe they came from a cybersecurity boot camp, maybe they came from a psychology degree and then took a few courses on pen testing and then got into cybersecurity and now they're on the red team which is a true story from a mentor that I had previously or maybe they were totally self-taught and just have the skills that employers want and that is how they got their foot in the door to cybersecurity just out of pure interest and their own personal projects. This is something that I really appreciate about cybersecurity and you couldn't say the same about a role, for example, like AI and machine learning because those typically will require you to have something like a PhD or at least a master's degree probably a minimum of PhD, especially for bigger companies who may be more so on the research side. A lot of the experience and skills that you need as a cybersecurity analyst can be typically gotten for free through online apps like Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, even most of the cybersecurity tools out there have a community edition or a free edition or they're just open source and free for anyone to use. And again, you cannot say the same for many other sectors in its technology. In general, the barrier to entry is really just how much you want to put into it and the effort and the interest that you have for cybersecurity. There isn't necessarily that much blocking you from getting a job in cybersecurity, especially entry level or early career, even if you don't have those official credentials that jobs may be looking for in a sector that more so wants things like a degree or or a master's or xyz now of course cybersecurity does put a heavy emphasis on certifications although i do not believe you require a certification to get that first cybersecurity job out of college or out of boot camp or out of personal study but it does also provide you ways to expand and grow in your career besides having to go through a whole master's program or a whole phd program and the last topic i wanted to touch is just the fact that cybersecurity does give you the ability to use these skills in any sector that you go into, whether it's inside tech or not. Personally, I feel like anyone who uses a computer should take some kind of mini course on good cybersecurity hygiene, especially when you're browsing online. And honestly, the internet can be a very dangerous place if you don't know what you're doing. And there's so many different types of malware and different attackers and exploits that could be out to get you that even if I were one day to leave the cybersecurity field, I could take these skills I currently have with me and be able to know how to secure my home network 
or be able to understand why I need to use a password manager or a VPN. And I do have a link for ExpressVPN for anyone who may be looking for a VPN to stay secure while you're browsing. But all of the knowledge and skills and tools that I use in cybersecurity don't just go away if I leave a specific job. If I were to go back to software engineering or if I were to leave tech and go into a whole different field or even just things like helping my grandmother create an account on a mobile banking app, all these things would be done much more securely because I'm able to have my cybersecurity background come with me and overall just make me a much more cyber aware person. And that in general just keeps me away from clicking on random links, avoiding certain websites, not providing my personal information to any application unless I really, really need to. And it's always crazy to me knowing how many people out there are so willing to give their information for free, people who are so falling for phishing attacks. But honestly, these things continue to happen because they work and people still fall for them. And then of course, being able to use these skills and bring them into future jobs I go into. For example, like I mentioned, software engineering. If I were ever to become a security engineer or just a general software engineer, I would have more insight into secure coding practices understanding source code analysis tools, as well as other application scanning tools to be able to integrate security much more early on in the software development lifecycle, rather than waiting for an application to be completed and then running a pen test and finding 10 critical vulnerabilities. And of course, just having awareness of the vulnerabilities like the OS top 10 and various different CVEs or CWEs out there is going to be very helpful regardless of where I end up working. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope this video was helpful to you guys and maybe convince you a little bit to come into cybersecurity as a security analyst or otherwise. And of course, the article that I bring out for every video where I'm trying to convince you to get into cybersecurity is the fact that there are going to be millions of cybersecurity job openings in the next few years. And we really do need more cybersecurity professionals in the field. So even if you're remotely interested, I would say to try out one of those free courses online in some area of cybersecurity that interests you the most, whether it be networking, digital forensics, malware, just look into one of them and see if there's any skills that you would be interested in learning and go from there. All right, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And I do have my course coming out soon on how to get your first job in cybersecurity and more information will be coming out in the coming weeks. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.